Hello everybody, my name is Ilya. And my name is Tyler. Together we make up Comrade, a couple that loves to play board games. And July is Strictly Two Player Month. Strictly Two Player Month. Two Player, player Month. Month. What that means is we're doing all sorts of videos and photography around Strictly Two Player Games. If you head on over to our Instagram, you can see beautiful collages of pictures. And if you're here on our channel, you might have seen some of the videos of us covering Strictly Two Player Games. Exactly. And don't forget, we've got some giveaways running. And if you want to learn more about those, we can show link you them. It down link below, them down below, I guess. <laughs> Creating more work for the description, Tyler. Well, conveniently, this video, we're covering one of the games that we're going to be giving away. That is actually very true. We are giving away a copy of... And ta-da! But we actually had technical difficulties, so you don't know we're giving this away yet. Oops. So you'll find out. <laughs> now, this game was given to us by Kevin, who watches our channel. So huge thank you to Kevin, because we really appreciate this game and love it dearly. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. So this is our Check It Out series, where we introduce various board games to you in hopes that we can show you a game that you might enjoy or think about checking out. And like we said, we're looking at Bandata. This one is designed by Chase Estep and it's published by Run A Man Games. What you're doing is you're traveling the world and looking at birds, trying to photograph them and their favorite fruits, hoping to have the best collection of photography to show. And you'll do this through Dice manipulation. But let's give you a quick overview of how to play. As always, you'll begin by setting up. You'll roll the dice and arrange them by color on the dice card. You'll then shuffle the bird cards and deal three face up on the table. You'll give each player a scoring cube and place it next to the scoring cards, and now you're ready to begin. Now, this game is played in two different phases the drafting phase and the cleanup phase. During the drafting phase, the first player will first select one of the three face up birds. They'll then perform the top actions listed on that bird, and then score using the bottom actions of that bird. Then they'll place that bird in their bandata. They'll then replace the bird with a new card. Now the second player will do all of the options but not replace the new board because now it is the cleanup phase. In the cleanup phase, both of you will score birds in your bandata. You'll discard the remaining two bird cards in the center of the table, add three new bird cards from the deck, and switch the first player for the next round. Now the heart of this game is dice manipulation. You'll draft birds which will let you manipulate the dice on the dice card, hoping to reach your score conditions and prevent your opponent from reaching theirs. You'll keep playing until the end of the fourth round and at that point the player with the most points wins. Will your photography simply wow the masses? So what do you think? I didn't realize bandata meant like a group of birds. Mm -hmm. So that's that was fun for me to learn. I really like this game. It is a simple blast. Mm -hmm. I like in the beginning I thought there'd be so many cards and there'll be an all the like always continuous learning journey checking, but there's only 12. Yep. So it's interesting to really gauge and see because you really get familiar with them and, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, Tyler has this card. I have to be really mindful of what I do to the dice. Mm -hmm. And you go through the whole deck. Yeah. So. So I really like that element, but overall it's been a fantastic experience. I really appreciate it. Yeah, before we get too far into that though, let's talk about our comparables. Why don't you kick us off for comparables? Okay. I will compare this one to Railroad Inc. Okay. And it's probably a bit of a stretch, Okay. but hear me out. So Railroad Inc, what you're doing is you're rolling the dice and drafting those dice, then drawing them on your board. Mm -hmm. Now, in this game, you're drafting cards, fixing and manipulating the dice that are in front of you for both you and your opponent, and then hoping that you can score more points than them based on your scoring conditions. And I think that like there's an alignment there with Railroad Inc. because you are trying to pick like the best opportunity for you to score points via the cards that you picked and the dice manipulation that you've decided to do. I like that. I think that's a, I don't think that's a stretch. I think that's a fairly... It might not be a stretch. There's a line. But there's this, a line. Yeah. A railroad actually Ooh, connecting uh, to the game. Uh, 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 very, very clever. Yeah, good comparison. Yeah, so I think like because of that, it really elevates the game like ban mm -hmm. in Bandata. And I really like Railroad Inc. So if you've enjoyed doing that, and in particular, you've enjoyed trying to figure out how you can mm -hmm. use like what's in the middle to benefit you the most in the um, center, or on your board, I guess. The uh, do like 
check this one out. Yeah. Mine is more of a stretch. And uh -huh. I, I think I'm going to like the core basics of the game. Like here's a game, here's how you can elevate it. Right. This is, uh, I'd say a pretty lighter game. It's only 10 to 20 minutes. It's yeah. pretty quick to learn. So I'm gonna go even lighter. Ooh. I'm gonna say Draftosaurus. So yeah. hear me out. Yeah. So basically the mechanism of drafting is present, which uh -huh. is like it is here. But in Draftosaurus, you're actively deciding which dinosaur you're going to take and which are you going to compete for for the scoring position. Mm -hmm. And I see that link here in the dice. Because you actively make the decision of which dice am I going to manipulate by taking by drafting a certain bird that will benefit me the most. Right. Because you, you, can, you can take many of the dice. You can manipulate many of the dice. You can take many of the dinosaurs. But mm -hmm. one will likely make you better off and more wealthy in points than the other. Exactly. So it's yeah. kind of that... It's, it's a level up in critical thinking around the drafting element of it. So if you're someone who really enjoyed Draftosaurus and has played it a lot... Maybe this is a game that you should check out. Yeah, I like that because it's like um, that's also like to the point of like the scoring opportunities. Like you're, it's open information. Once everybody is drafted, like you see the play, you see the um, dinosaur that the other player has drafted, mm -hmm. so you know what they are taking, and then you can make your decisions kind of that's based true. on what they have on their another board. layer. Exactly, I like it. I do like that. That's a good. And one. that is our comparables. So now we'll go into why should you check out Vendetta. Why should you check it out? All right, I have two things I want to just like say right off the bat. The first one is really like just gene general speak about the game. It's fast, it's simple, and it's extremely portable. So you can play this anywhere. You can even use the box as a dice tray if you really wanted to. Um, I mean, you'll only have to really roll the dice once, but some of the, some of the cards like allow you to re-roll the dice, and that's always nice. So it's really easy to learn, it's really easy to teach, and it's just like a quick game. So it has that going for it. If you're looking for something like almost like a filler game, I guess, then this one probably nails it on the dot. I don't yeah. like filler. I don't much really a filler like game. Yeah. But let's change that. Yes. It's a game that fills my heart. It's a heart filler game. All games fill my heart. The and dice well, are also beautiful in this game. Yes. They have this nice spacey texture. I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, they're like galactic-esque. Like they have that nice flow of color. It's not a solid colored dye. It has like the swirl, <laughs> which I like. Anyway, what was your second point? Yes, okay, my second point is if you like roll and rights actually, I would argue that mm -hmm. this is, even though it's not a roll and write, I think it has a, gives off similar vibes of a roll and write. Okay. And I think like if you like roll and rights and you're looking for a lighter, simple, easy to learn roll and write, then maybe think about checking out Bandata as well mm -hmm. because it, yeah, like I said, gives the same kind of vibe. Okay, I have three rapid points. Oh. Uh, one is dice manipulation. It's yeah. a great entry into dice manipulation. There's a lot of games we absolutely adore, including Wayfarers of South Tigris. So I think there's levels up from this game and it kind of can be the base for a lot of games, which I really like. Number two, there's some variability in the game. There's seed mm -hmm. tokens yes. and there's a uh, secret... Hidden scoring. Hidden scoring. Yeah. yeah, hidden scoring. So ties to really help you push and then seeding, seeds let you adjust dice even more, which is yeah. really fun. And they're cute little tokens I too. I really like the seeds. Yeah. Yeah. I think you, once you start playing with both of them, you kind of never stop. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the last thing I'll say too is the progression and how the game is played. Right. So right off the bat, you like I said earlier, the, you think there's a lot of cards, there's a lot of information to take in, but you realize there's only 12 cards. Mm -hmm. So after you play this game a couple of times, you realize that, hey, these cards are the same. What is the best mix of them? How can I pair these together? How can I make sure Tyler doesn't get his perfect pairing? Yep. And you really begin to play the opponent rather than your own game. Yes. And then you can see like, oh, this is gonna score Tyler a lot of points if I don't change these dice. It hurts me too, but it hurts me less than it hurts him. So mm -hmm. I have to start thinking about what he's doing and I'm doing, and that really progresses in such a dynamic strategic way that this game just becomes almost like a staple. A whole different game. Yeah, honestly. you can keep playing yeah. it and it's, oh, you're playing the opponent and it's so exciting. And I absolutely adore this game. Yeah, I do love the evolution in this game because I feel like we've played it so many times now that like we know the cards, we know mm -hmm. the patterns, uh, we are now making decisions that are not necessarily the best for us, but are not good for, like, they'll be a negative effect on Ilya mm -hmm. because I need to, like, for example, make that spread, spread larger. 
Yeah. Because the games are the games have for close. us have been pretty close. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's just like one of those fun um, progression things where I, exactly. I like to see myself get better at a game, and I also love like to see myself change how I play the game. And mm -hmm. Bandata does that really well. Well, all that said, why shouldn't you check this one out? Well, I think for the exact same reason I kind of ended off with <laughs> is uh, if you're looking for a game that has like Wingspan, for example, there's so many so different many cards, cards and you can just yeah, build a strategy, good. different strategy each and every time. And you can experiment, you can play and you really it's a sense of discovery. I think this game initially has that, but it obviously longevity wise, it doesn't have that. Right. And more of it is honing in on the strategy of the information that you have. You know what's coming potentially playing the odds, playing your opponent. It's much more of a strategy based than a discovery based type of game. Right. Yeah, so I guess like in summary, there may be some replayability concerns. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't necessarily, I think it's the style. Right. Like if you're looking more for like a discovery type, like oh, I want to yeah. learn okay, okay. more of this type of game, like here you're narrowing down on strategy because it's yeah. more of like you're not going to get new information. You're going to get similar information yeah. you already know. Yeah, you'll know like what cards are going to come mm -hmm. up. Yeah, that's a good point. In that's theory, point. that can be said for Wingspan, but I think you have to play, have to play hundreds of times. Yeah. Really, and and also long. count on the luck of the draw because here you see all the cards. That's true, yeah. yeah. Uh, or I guess most of the, the second player actually doesn't get the chance to draft one of the cards, but that's a, or the first player, but that's a whole different thing. Anyway, now what do you think? I guess I just feed off of what you were saying and like as you evolve in this game like obviously it becomes more of like a head-to-head -head, um, battle type thing as most two-player games do. I think that this one like um, yeah as you progress through the game and learn a bit more about it it ends up being that thing where there is like confrontation where you're taking um, you're drafting di dice or cards or sorry you're manipulating the dice or drafting the cards to either halt your opponent from scoring more points or maybe, um, well, actually just halting your opponent from playing mm -hmm. more, from scoring more points. And sometimes it's a very obvious move and you know you should do it and you obviously should do it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying don't do it because you should, <laughs> mm -hmm. but like because of that confrontation, it's basically a direct sh shot or direct fire at like Ilya's Direct play. fire! Because I'm not going to change, I'm either going to change the dice for my benefit or I'm going to change the dice mm -hmm. only to make Ilya's game worse. Well, and I, th <laughs> and I think it's primarily too because the scoring is like real time. So yes. you actually see where everybody at. So you're much more mindful of if your opponent's ahead, you're going to be like, how do I slow you down? Yep. But I like the secret objective or the yeah, hidden that's objectives why I like because the they kind of help yeah. out in that essence a little bit. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So overall, what do we think? I love it. I like it a lot. I really like mm -hmm. it a lot. I think it's quick, it's fast, it's easy, it's portable, it's simple. It's a lot of these like quick one word uh, answers I can give you. High production, beautiful galactic mm -hmm. dice. I don't think they're galactic. I need to stop saying that. No. There, someone teach me the word for what it means when the dice are like almost marble. Like, you know, marble cheese. Maybe that's what they are. Maybe it's, <laughs> maybe it's a marble dice. Marble cheese dice. <laughs> Um, but overall, I really enjoy this game too. I think it's really fun to play. I think it's really tight in strategy. You don't mm. really see the strategy until you start playing it because it's the interconnectedness of the cards, which I really, really enjoy. And I can't wait to play more of this game. We've played it quite a few times already and I don't see this leaving our collection anytime soon. Yep, always close games. So I think that really has a benefit for it. And you just wanna like, as soon as you're done playing, almost play it again. Cause it's just, it hits those check marks. So for our question of the day today, we're going to ask you, what is a bird that you enjoy? What? I don't want to say favorite <laughs> bird, because sometimes favorite is a lot of pressure. All right. So what's a bird you love? I'm going to give you my favorite bird. Sometimes there's a lot of pressure to ask favorite. No pressure, but I... The okay, only reason, tell us your favorite bird, The Tyler. only reason I knew this is, is because that I did a project on it. No. What no. is it? It's the Peregrine Falcon. It's okay. amazing. What else do you have do to say? Do I have say? to tell you more? Well, yeah. Why oh, is yeah. it your favorite okay. bird? All right. All right. So basically these birds like dive bomb and they have this ability that basically like covers their eyes in almost like a contact lens that protects them from in short bursting their eyes and they don't have to close their eyes for when they're like dive bombing in the, in the hunt. Um, and they go at insane speeds. So it's very cool to kind of like see it all happen. I did a physics project on my in my first year of university on them. Mm -hmm.
Maybe should, there should be a board game about Peregrine Falcon. Maybe there should be, but they're very awesome. What about you? Mine is a pigeon. I think <laughs> they're often misunderstood, but they're just, you know, they're trying to live their best life. They're trying mm -hmm. to scavenge for some crumbs. And I just, I have a, like, I can envision myself when you inevitably pass away to just sit at a bench at a park, be sad and just feed pigeons every day. And that's, you know, my, like, it's, it's kind of like the, what's it, a home alone in New York where that, uh, individual, uh, individual with the pigeons, it's like, that's, that, that's going to oh, be me. All right. I yeah. guess so. R.I.P. me, I guess. <laughs> well, it'll be like an 80 years. So it'll be like when I'm an old, old man. Come back to watch this video and be like, yes, I promised myself I would go pigeon feeding. Exactly. I'll be like, you know, I have to get out of bed. I'm sad Tyler passed away, but I have to feed the pigeons and find my new destiny. Do we have a lot of pigeons here? No, I don't so, think so we right? need to move yeah. where there's more pigeons. And people are going to start coming for me and be like, you don't want to see pigeons. I do, because where I lived in Russia, there was a ton of pigeons, and I like them. Thank you so much for making it this far. If you liked this video, hit that thumbs up. Maybe even hit that subscribe button if you're new here. We love talking about board games, and all of the comments that you leave down below are super appreciated. Mm -hmm. Until next time, though. Check out Bendata. Sure. Let us know what you think. And keep an eye out for a giveaway of Bendata, which should be coming as soon as our technical difficulties are resolved. Until next time though, this is us checking out. Bye!